Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics. And in this video, I'd like to discuss whether or not Boris Johnson and his senior advisors are learning any lessons yet from the loss of power that Brexit has delivered, as opposed to the increased powers they expected. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So controversial comment here, but maybe not all of the Brexit benefits that senior Tories like Boris Johnson and Michael Gove spouted were technically lies. Take back control, fine example. Now we all know that Brexit means that the UK has less control. We used to promote EU policies. Now we have to simply follow them. For some things, we even had power of veto. Take all that nonsense about Turkey joining the EU, hasn't happened yet. And if it ever does happen, and you'd imagine that the political circumstances will lead that way at some point, just as the political wind will blow us back there at some point, but if it happened, couldn't actually have happened if we were an EU member, but strongly objected. Now, we have no powers of veto on anything anymore. We will, however, be following EU rules if we want to trade. And we do want to trade. Even those who thought we could do without smooth trade with the EU should have woken up from that fever dream by now. So no, the UK was losing control with Brexit, not taking it back. However, the statement take back control could be seen another way. Because although the EU does not remove control from us, if anything, it empowers us with access to the European Court of Human Rights, for example. It does constrain the power of our national government. Certain standards of human rights, worker rights, consumer rights, environmental standards, none of these constrain decent politicians who would, if anything, wish to strengthen them. But we don't have decent politicians in charge. Take back control was clearly used to suggest the general population would have more control. But what they may have actually meant was that Brexit would take back control for them, not us. From that point of view, it may well have been a genuine rallying cry for conservative Eurosceptics. Only, isn't how it worked out, is it? Boris Johnson conceded ground on absolutely everything with the Brexit deal, except for one thing. He actually did genuinely get one thing in the deal. He is allowed to throw EU standards onto the bonfire. He has the control not only of laws of the land, but the standards that he and his cronies must operate under. Brilliant. Not that he intends to use this power for the good of us or the country. In my initial political naivety as a kid, I often saw the polarised politics in Britain in the 1980s as the left wanting people to be empowered and sharing the wealth of the country, whereas the right were just focused on the wealth and influence of the country, even if most of its population were no better off than citizens in a much poorer, weaker country. Boris Johnson doesn't care about either. He will weaken and impoverish our people, and he will weaken and impoverish the nation. It's not that one wins over the other, they both lose. Nor do the other Brexiteers that he threw his lot in with. They just want power and riches for themselves and to hell with the rest. But do they have it? It's hard to say how. If Boris Johnson ever uses the power of the deal to diverge from EU standards in any way that would significantly impact trade, the EU will take action to raise trade barriers even higher to counter it. Both sides would be acting perfectly within the bounds of the treaty. Every time Johnson tries to gain a competitive advantage for some sector in Britain, the effect will actually be the opposite. Did he realise this, I wonder? Given his reputation for not listening to detailed advice, it is entirely possible that he simply didn't understand the implications of what he was signing up for. Take our financial services sector. Now, because this is certainly concerning some Conservative MPs who want Boris Johnson now to renegotiate the Brexit deal, so this sector of our economy produces 10% of our tax receipts. Even the Conservatives balk at that. They know they can only push a population so far. Every time they come to power, granted the current government are the worst, but every time a Conservative government comes to power, they chip away at public services to literally lethal levels. You think a lot of people have died from COVID in this country? It is still less than those believed to have been killed as a direct result of Tory austerity. Yet, Covid has killed people more quickly, but Conservative fiscal policies kill people more surely. And for the most part, they get away with it. 
The Conservatives have won three general elections since austerity. As long as they're only hurting people who generally don't vote in large numbers or who live in areas the Conservatives don't win anyway, then it works out for them. And if it looks a bit ropey, they throw a community a few quid as an election is looming. They did this in 2019 and they're doing it again ahead of local elections this year, using taxpayer money, our money, to bribe people in a few marginals. But 10% of our tax receipts, when you consider that they've already stripped away public services, much more reduction in the state, and you'd think it's gonna be hurting people who do tend to vote. They've already taken the piss with the pandemic. They've killed close ones to, you know, the people who vote potentially for them, will not forgive them for. They've excluded three million small business owners from financial support, and that's a demographic that generally votes conservative. Perhaps they think they can just throw them to the wolves now and then bribe them in 2024 to keep voting blue. Perhaps they're right. Perhaps we are that stupid as a nation. But if our financial services sector shrinks significantly, they know that that money will have to be made up. There's not much more they can strip away now. They'd have to raise taxes elsewhere. Technically, they already need to. But the Chancellor looks like making spending promises in next month's budget whilst deferring tax increases, putting the country's finances in an even sorrier state. And the thing is that shrinking tax receipts from the City of London and other financial centre areas isn't a fear, it's a reality. The EU are not granting equivalents for a whole raft of our services industry. This has resulted in businesses and assets disappearing overseas to EU countries. Now, the EU are only going to carry on with this move because it's boosting their own businesses and harming that of a neighbouring competitor. I saw a report in the Financial Times which seemed to think that ministers thought the sheer size of London's financial centre would shield it from the worst damage, but that they also believed they'd be granted equivalence. And... I have seen what appears to be genuine alarm from ministers that equivalence isn't being granted. They do seem to be genuinely surprised. The uh, Financial Times may well be right that Johnson based his strategy, such as it was, on gifts from the EU that are not required of the deal, but he thought would be forthcoming anyway. Only an entitled prick like these privileged public schoolgoers could possibly have made such a miscalculation. This is why, I'm not saying people who go to public school shouldn't be in government, but you know, this is why you at least need a few people with their feet on the ground in decision making. Nobody whose standard of life actually depends upon their continued success could possibly have made such an error of judgment. A mistake like this can only be made by someone who, if they fail at everything in their life, they'll still be fine because you know what? They're rich and privileged. The only equivalence we are going to get is that which is in the EU's interest to give. And people in the UK are now awake to that reality. And for Johnson, this is what he made Brexit all about. Turning London into a Singapore on the Thames, getting that US trade deal. The EU said they'd never allow Singapore on the Thames. But the useless mop thought he knew better. So now he's waiting to see what the EU will give us. Like a hungry dog circling the table to see what crumbs will fall from Europe's table. Taking back control never applied to us. And it seems it's also not going to be applying to Boris Johnson and his government. But those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. If you'd like to support the channel further, please click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.